and we are live hello guys and welcome to jason heber live if you're not familiar with the show what we do here is interview the loved ones of missing persons and unsolved homicides in an effort to help spread awareness and bring justices to the case tonight we have a co-host with us who most of you are familiar with if you just heard that that was my new puppy i apologize greatly i'm gonna i have someone in there kind of taking care of him i hope we can't hear that throughout the broadcast but if you hear it a little bit that's what that is so i do apologize but we do have our co-host denise on tonight who you're all familiar with hey denise hey jason how are you i'm doing very well how about yourself i'm doing wonderful thank you so much for joining us denise i know that you have been have helped out with this case a lot and kind of a boots on the ground way which yes. um denise does a lot for any of you that don't know that i make it a point to let you know that every time we do a show because denise is absolutely awesome but um if you don't know denise helps out with tons and tons of cases that's why i always have her on the show she's absolutely awesome so thank you thank for joining you. us denise thank uh, you to everyone in the chat karen uh angie uh oh we get denise of course uh shammy oh shammy what's up i haven't seen you in a while oh, we've got a lot of our regulars s hicks sharonda tls kaleidoscope what's up guys thank you for joining us tonight i'm just giving it a moment for a few more people to get notifications sent out so we get a decent amount of people in the chat we're about 35 right now um tonight we are going to be doing the case of joshua amos uh, we have his mother on tonight um it's a case that happened in early 2023 so as you guys know typically what we do here i'm going to read you a little excerpt to kind of get you familiar with the case and then we will bring his mom on and we'll go from there if you're new to the show you can obviously you can participate in the chat as you're doing now you can also ask questions that i will bring up live to the guests um there are there are some questions that if they've already been answered or maybe there are questions that can't be talked about for whatever reason uh we may just answer them in chat versus uh bringing them on so um just be aware of that and uh we might not see a question either so if you ask it one time maybe try it again if we don't get to it sometimes there are a lot of questions coming in Okay, we're getting to about 40 to 50 people coming in now. So I can go ahead and we can start the information. So again, today's story is about Joshua Amos. Let me go ahead and make sure we get his pictures going here with the video. Just give me one second. Uh, sorry, guys. Give me one second. I'm trying to loop the video here. It keeps stopping. Uh, video clips. Sorry, give me one second. No, here we go. Loop. Okay. And then let me get it playing again. Hopefully it just keeps looping. Now every five to eight seconds, you should see a new picture there. Let's just, okay, perfect. Alrighty. So, so tonight we're interviewing Christina Amos Merrick, mother of Joshua Amos, who went missing March 19th, 2023, after being separated from his group of friends during a night out. Uh, the following excerpt is posted on his Bring Josh Home Facebook page, which will be listed below in the um, in the description. You'll be able to find that as well as Christina's page, my page, uh, all kinds. Of, I'll put Denise's in there as well. Um, so there's going to be all kinds of links in the description under the video if you would like to do further research after the show. And we ask you to please go and sign up for his group and help out with anything that you can. So on Saturday, March 18th, Josh went out with his friends like he's done a hundred times before. For whatever reason, he left his phone at a friend's house along the way. In the early morning hours of March 19th, he got separated from his friends and left Scarlet's Cabaret on foot. He was seen on camera footage making his way toward JJK bus stop. A sweet bus driver helped him make his way to the Emerson Park station to buy a day pass. She described him as being cold, tired and a bit confused about his location once at emerson he purchased a day pass for the metro around 6 45 a.m we see him on camera spending several minutes waiting but he never gets on a train he leaves the platform on foot we are not able to confirm if he ever used that ticket at a later time we are able to track his movements on a few different cameras but the last footage excuse me is from uh, EEJ motor transports at 7:28 a.m. and then he disappears. 
We have yet to find any confirmed footage of him since. His family and law enforcement have conducted foot searches, drone flyovers, and canine searches. They have covered the majority of Washington Park and East St. Louis within several blocks of his last known locations. No evidence of his whereabouts have been found in that area. We've called and visited all local hospitals and ERs. We've canvassed local homeless shelters. We've also checked all bank records and there have been no activity since his disappearance. We are unsure if he had any cash on him after leaving the club. According to a report from a local woman, she heard rumors of a white male being mugged around 5 to 5.30 a.m. We're unable to confirm if this happened or if it was Josh, but it's possible he incurred some injuries. Interesting. At this time, we are asking a few things from the public. One, continue to share posts and keep his face prevalent on social media. Two, if you believe you see him, call 911 immediately, then call family. Three, if you live, and by the way, all, all ways to contact family will also be in the description, as we said. Three, if you live in or near Washington Park, Fairmont City, East St. Louis, Granite City, etc. Please check all abandoned buildings, sheds, homes. He may have been cold and looking for warm shelter. And four, if you have a ring or security camera in any of the previously mentioned areas, please check your footage for sightings of him. Since an, uh, and this is obviously an old post because uh, it's been much longer than a month, uh, but it says since an entire month has passed, he could be outside of the uh, Illinois Missouri state lines. We are asking that no matter where you live, consider sharing our posts and keep an eye out. Our family and friends are so incredibly appreciative of the kindness and support that has been shared thus far. We continue to ask for prayers and help. We will not give up until we find Josh. So an excellently written passage there. Thank you so much to Brittany Nicole. And um, we are going to bring on Christina, who is mother of Josh. One moment. Christina, how are you? I'm okay. Thanks for having me, Jason. Hi, Denise. Hi, Christina. How are you? I'm okay. Good to see you. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And obviously, Denise kind of already said this before we went on, but we just want to thank you for your strength. We, we couldn't even imagine. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Denise is very familiar with the feeling, but I couldn't even imagine being in your shoes here. So I, I just, I say this to everyone that I talk to. Um, although I do many of these it's a totally different thing being on this side so every time i talk to one of you guys I, I just like to take a moment out to thank you for you know how strong you're being and uh how much you're fighting you know for your loved one and just want to let you know that you're not alone obviously you have me and denise you can see all the people in the chat so we have a, a community here of people that love to help out with cases so i pray that this is going to help bring you some answers so just want us to thank you thank you i appreciate it do, do you want to start by um maybe just telling us a little bit about Josh in general and then kind of lead us into the timeline of events relevant to his disappearance. And sure, uh, Josh was 32 when he went missing. Um, he had just started a new job at Precoat and uh, that night that he went out was with some new friends. He hadn't known very long at all. Uh, I didn't personally know any of them that he was with that night. Uh, Josh was very funny. He was our storyteller. <laughs> um, always had a good story to tell. Uh, I was looking at the pictures you had on the loop, and he was just so handsome. <laughs> you know, it's um, very handsome guy. That stuck out to me right away. Yeah. Yeah, I I love looking at pictures. Some days I can look at pictures and not cry, and other days it's just really hard for me to see. Um, but uh, just so sorry. you, know, I'm gonna. Are you okay with me? You know, I post them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just That's to good. Prepare. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he had two daughters that he loved very much, uh, a lot of nieces and nephews, and he was the fun uncle. He just a lot of fun to be around and hang out with, and um, it was a very hard worker. He, uh, he loved to work, and he loved his playtime, too, um, mostly with family and friends, of course, and he had a lot of good friends that have become like family members to us through the years. Um, he was just a very special person. He's very special to all of us and um, it's very deeply missed. It's left a, a really big void 
in all of our lives. Uh, it's the ones that love him and know him. Um, he's just irreplaceable, you know? So, sorry. <laughs> Oh, it, it, take all the time you need. If you need a moment to step off camera, we're absolutely prepared for that. And we can, it's, don't, don't worry about it. You know, I usually don't cry through these things, but I don't know. Seeing his pictures just, um, it, but um, I loved, like I said, I loved looking at pictures of him and, and remembering happy times. And, um, and of course we pray, you know, um, we'll get to see him again. So, Yeah. So just so you know, uh, like I said, I put them up there because everyone watching, we want them to see what he looks like for a sighting or stuff. No, definitely. If, they're, if they're too much for you at any point, just tell me. I'll, I'll oh, get no, it. you're fine. Really you're awesome. good. I'll get it together. <laughs> okay. Nah, I totally I'm, go I'm good. I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. Do you want to kind of lead into that night in specific or anything relevant beforehand? or? Um, Sure. You know, that night... Uh, <laughs> we actually were able to watch the video from scarlet's uh of that evening we watched it the following night once we made the missing persons police report uh washington washington police uh went with us to the club and we viewed the videotape him and my young our, myself and my youngest son did and um uh, so the last time we see him on videotape at the club is at 4 58 um it shows that Josh was in the parking lot and he just walked away. Um, not exactly sure why. Uh, we know that the, the fight had broken out at the club and police were showing up and I don't know uh, what the reason was. I know Josh wasn't involved in the fight and he's not the reason why the police came that night. Uh, but he walked away at 458 and just walked towards Washington Park. Um, then we have them on camera again at the first Metro bus stop. Um, and that was about at five 30. Uh, and that's where the bus driver described him as looking cold and a little disoriented. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but the weather that morning, it was extremely cold. It was about 20 degrees and very, very windy. Um, and unfortunately Josh wasn't wearing a coat. Uh, he was just in a long sleeve t-shirt and jeans and tennis shoes. Um, but the bus driver, you know, she helped him purchase an all-day pass. And we're thinking, this is just our assumption, is he kept telling her he wanted to get home to Granite City or Madison County. At that point, when she took him to Emerson Park, he might have realized at that point that that's a train and that does not go to Granite City. And so our thoughts were that he was trying to walk back to the bus station to get to Granite City. And that's why we think he might have gotten lost and just took the wrong street. Mm -hmm. uh, the last street we have him on, we did find new video. And the last street he was seen on was North 19th Street. Uh, it's kind of over by uh, EEJ Trucking, and and there's a small uh, fire station there. And it shows him walking down North 19th Street, and then we never see him again. Out that way, there's a couple of abandoned homes that were searched. No evidence of them found there. And then it leads up to railroad tracks. And that's the last we have confirmation, the last sighting. And that okay. was about, I, I can't remember what the timestamp on that is. I believe the one at EEJ was at 728. And I believe the one on 19th was just maybe about maybe 745 or so. I could be wrong on that. I'm not exactly sure. But that's the last known video we have of him okay. as that time. Okay, and I know Denise has a couple things she wants to ask as well. Sure. So I just want to get one question in quick, and then we can have Denise ask a couple. Because Lance Jones asks, uh, who was the last person to see him? So was it the bus stop, the woman at the bus stop? Yeah. Yes. Okay. As far as we know, she's the last one that has spoke to him. I think there was an elderly gentleman that after the bus driver left, I think he talked to an elderly man about 
getting on the train. And to me, we uh, as a family, we feel like he was just trying to get back home to Granite. And he probably realized that, hey, the Metrolink train's not going to get me there, but the bus, the buses go to Granite. The trains do not. Mm -hmm. And I think he just got turned around. It was trying to make his way back to the bus stop. So he got turned around. He had previously been described as like a little confused. So you think that's. And I think it was just so cold. I mean, by that time, if you think about it, he left the club at 4.58 a.m. And the last time he was at the bus station was about 6.30. I mean, that's already over an hour and a half yeah. in that weather. And um, it was just, the wind was so strong and it was so cold that day. She said his nose was red, his nose was running, he was cold. Um, I think, you know, you're going to, and he didn't know that area. I mean, he had been to the clubs down there, but he had, he was not familiar. Uh, he did go to the casino every once in a while in East St. Louis to play, but he didn't know downtown East St. Louis. He would have not known where he was. Okay. I think, and Josh, would, we make jokes about this all the time, but he had the worst sense of direction. <laughs> and with him not having a phone or a way to GPS it, I don't see, I think he just honestly got turned around. Okay. I think he just got lost. Okay. And, it, you know, we know he was trying to find his way back home because of the statements he made to the bus driver. Um, I, I just think he was turned around and couldn't find his way. Okay. Denise was there something you wanted to. Well, I know she addressed, there's a lot of questions about the phone. I knew Josh did not have a phone that night. Right. Um, so, you know, that was one thing he didn't. Um, do you know if he had spoken to the bus driver and asked um, if there was a way he could get to a phone? No, see? he never, he never did ask the bus driver that. As far as we know, she's, she did not say that he asked to use a phone. Okay. And honestly, nowadays, I know me personally, I only remember my parents' phone number by heart because they've had the same phone number for like 30 years. Right. A lot of us have our numbers programmed in our phones and we do not memorize phone numbers anymore. Almost That's never. one thing I would really um, ask that you all do that we've learned through this tragedy is memorize a phone number memorize at least a couple of phone numbers so if you're ever caught out without your phone your phone dies or you find somebody and have to borrow a phone you have a way to connect with someone um i know i saw something on facebook a couple of months ago saying you know if you're broke down and your phone battery's going dead simply record on a new voice message so even if your phone dies hey i'm stuck at this location come get me or send help if you can mm -hmm. Just be aware of your surroundings. Emergencies happen so quickly and you're caught off guard. And he literally, he didn't have our numbers memorized. I was hoping at the beginning, my mom and dad would get a phone call because I know he knew their number. Uh, unfortunately, that hasn't happened. Um, but as far as I know, he never did ask to borrow a phone. Okay. okay. I haven't heard anything about that. No. Okay. I definitely wanted to clarify that because that was a lot of questions that had been asked you know, right. if, if there was any, um, you know, and also um, I know he did not have much clothes on. I know it was cold. I believe if I'm correct, it, the temperature had went from, uh, you know, it was like in the teens and then it went up a few days later where it got a little bit warmer and then we had a very bad cold spell after that too right right um, i know it was very cold when we went searching too yes um, it, was, oh, it was cold yes it, it, it was, was wet and rainy and cold and and just horrible out there definitely yes and the area that was searched and i know it was a big group of people that went and searched um my biggest thing was, is um, I know there was a lot of rumors about Diddy talk and I know his friends were not um, 
they they're not suspected in anything. Right. You know, this is just he walked away and clarify. And that was the biggest thing for me is to get a lot of clarification because your family deserves that. Exactly. Um, um and you know, when it when it came up to the situation about the the people that were there with him that night, you know, I admit at first I was curious, hey, I had some questions of my own is, you know, but when you look at all the videos from the different area cameras that we've been able to see, there is never a car that follows Josh. Uh, it was so early on a Sunday morning, there's barely anybody else out there. All you see basically is Josh. You'll see a car every once in a while, but we've never seen anybody following him. Uh, there's never been a car that's following him. It's just him walking and it, he looks like he's lost. He's just, hey, he walks for a while and then he looks around and he keeps going. And I think honestly, he was just trying to find the bus station again, the Jackie Joyner station to get back home. Um, that's my interpretation. When I see the video, he just gets lost. That's mm -hmm. what I see. I don't, I've never seen anybody following him at all though. So we don't suspect that the guys that he was there with that night had anything to do with him disappearing. Mm -hmm. um, I've Can talked I to all three of them. Um, you know, and like I said, they were newer friends of Joshua's. He didn't know them well. I didn't know them at all. Um, but as far as we believe now, you can tell nobody was following. And it's not like Josh had his phone to call them and say, hey, come get me. I'm so I'm at this place right now. He's literally walking the whole time. He doesn't have a way to tell anybody where he's at. How, uh, um, can I just jump in with a quick question? Sure. It's kind of relevant right there. So Carla Sapp had asked, where's the cabaret located? I'll just add on to the question. How far are we talking? Because I know it took almost two hours from like the cabaret to the bus station to, you know, how far are these locations from each other? It's a couple miles apart. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a couple is, miles apart. Is it like downtown? Where, where, where it are is these? right off of um, oh, Buncombe Road in Washington Park. Mm -hmm. And it's right close to 64 Highway. It's not far at all. And Jackie Joyner, the bus station is on the other side of East St. Louis if you take 64, but it's a long walk. I mean, it's it's definitely a trek. Uh, you know, um, as far as we know, he did not get a ride there. We've never seen any evidence to suggest that somebody gave him a ride from Washington Park to East St. Louis. We believe he was on foot that whole time. Okay. okay. Yeah. It, it's it's Jason. It's kind of roughly down the street where the where the place is, and then the highway is about just right. I mean, you can see it's it right there. Way. Yeah, and then the bus um, MetroLink station is it's probably about two miles down the road. Okay. Yeah, it's it's over by the Casino Queen in mm -hmm. that area. Yeah, because that that would still be quite two hours would be quite a long. Yeah, and, and honestly, we don't know if he walks straight from Scarlet's to the bus stop. We're not sure if he got lost even going to the bus stop or if somebody picked him up and took him there. Uh, there was reports, uh, a friend of mine's friend that she used to work with said, I saw him on 64 Highway about 515 in the morning. And that would match if he took, if he was walking and he took 64 and got off by where the bus stop was. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we haven't, there's no verification at all that he got into the car with someone. Okay. Um, yeah, we have a question in the chat and I, I wanted to ask something as well. Um, okay. The time, he was at the club at like almost five in the morning. Are things open really late around there? Is that normal? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think that club you know? closes down till 6 a.m. And then it reopens at like noon or something, I think. Oh, wow. I'm not sure. Um, so that's normal but, then. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's normal. 
there's several clubs in the area, mm -hmm. it's not just East St. Louis or Washington Park, but we also have Brooklyn and right. Boche that we yeah. have a lot of clubs in the area that are open all night long. Some mm -hmm. are open, I believe. It's been a while since I've been to one. Um, some of them are open 24 hours, but that mm -hmm. one closes, I believe, at six. Right. I've never, I've never heard of that except for maybe like New York and Miami, you know? <laughs> Yeah, it's a busy place down there. And um, wow. I know we were there the, the next, well, the evening of the 20th, I believe. I, it, everything kind of merges together for me. It's hard to keep the dates separated. But we were on the ground quickly. Um, we had SARS canine unit has been, oh, my gosh, they've been such a big blessing. Uh they were out there on the 21st with the dogs looking. Oh, wow. uh, I know I was called on the 20th. I was at work the morning of the 20th and, and uh, my youngest called and said, mom, I don't mean to scare you, but we think Josh is missing. Nobody knows where he's at. Nobody's heard from him. And I left work, came home and packed and was on the road within an hour or two. And uh, from there, everything kind of blurs to me. I, I can't remember exact dates on all the searches, but we were on the ground every day. At least somebody was um, the first month, at least. Um, I do want to say I, I've heard some criticisms about the police that are in charge of the case. The detective we work with, has been amazing. She's not a missing person detective. She's actually a homicide detective, but she got caught with the case. And um, I've gotten to know her and I, I truly love her. Uh, she's just been amazing in this whole thing. At the beginning, it was rough. Uh, Washington Park does not have the resources. Um, and, and there were times I felt like I was batting my head against the wall. It was just so tough to get anything done. And as soon as Illinois State took over, that's been a big help. And especially with Chelsea, the detective in charge of our case, she's um, she keeps me up to date. She calls me as soon as she hears anything. Uh, She's went out of her way, even on her days off, to check video for us. If we get a tip in and somebody says, I think I saw Josh at this location, she'll go get the videotape. In. And sometimes we get to watch it together. Other times, you know, she'll do it at home or whatever. And she'll pick it up on her way home from work. Um, I want to give a shout out to Chelsea. She's been uh, really good. Uh, we also have a PI now that we work with. And unfortunately, nothing new has come to light. We don't have any new leads, but she's been working the case really hard for us. And I, I really appreciate Elizabeth. Um, it was funny. I called her and she said, is this Josh's mom? And I, I mean, she knew who I was right away. And she's been on our Bring Josh homepage from the very beginning, day one. And she had actually met Josh in real life. And so that was kind of a weird thing to know that so she knew what he was like in real life she knows his mannerisms and uh so she's been gun hole and she's done her best but unfortunately nothing new has come to light we still don't have any solid leads so um anyway just wanted to take a minute to thank them they've been they've been great absolutely so. thank you to you know any to them anybody helping out and the, and yeah. the case, it's always appreciated guys any little bit you can do um absolutely just, see, the family always really appreciates it so please uh Brittany asks is there any water nearby there's a lot of water nearby um i never realized because i had never really been in that area but there are ponds there of course is the mississippi there's creeks a lot of ponds small ponds all around that area um I was surprised about how much water there is out there. I was really surprised. Now, um, Midwest EquiSearch, when they came back to town on November 18th, 
And we didn't really publicize it because they have specialized drones that picks up colors and it's very detailed. And so you can't have a lot of people in the area because the color of his blue jeans is what we programmed in. And so that camera on those drones will pick up as something as small as a little Coke can. Um, and they send the video back to the people operating the drones. And then if they think it's a possibility, they send out searchers to that area. So we didn't broadcast that one uh, because we couldn't have a lot of <laughs> blue jeans walking around the area, of course. Um, but they, the water, because we have been in a drought by December or November, uh, the ponds in that area were really shallow. So we were able to pretty much determine that the smaller ponds, there's no sighting of him. Um, okay. Unfortunately, like I had talked to Denise earlier, the Mississippi is a different story. Um, I have not yet been able to find a dive team to go into the Mississippi, but the problem there would be the Mississippi flows so swiftly. And you're talking, it's been, it'll be a year next month. Uh, I don't know if that's even doable right now. I really don't. Um, if anybody knows of a dive team, uh, I'm looking for one. I always recommend adventures with purpose, but I think you have to have a, a vehicle in order. Yes. To the that. one, the people that I have talked to with dive teams said they work with metal detectors and they look for like cars that have been submerged in the water. They don't go in looking. So I haven't found a dive team yet. Um, you know, but if anybody knows of one, pass them my way for sure. Yeah. Please say in the chat, guys. And Denise, I, I'll, I want to let you get a question in as well. I know you probably have a few. Um, just to answer, Lance, uh, 19th Street was the last time that he was seen. He asked if he was seen any stations beyond 19th Street. That that's he had. He was not right. That's what we talked right. about earlier. Okay. Yeah. Right. Denise, if you would like. To. No, I was just going to kind of point on what um, Christina said. Um, Mississippi River has a very strong current um, mm -hmm. that it's it's really hard to go into in certain parts of the areas harder than others. Right. Um, so that's what's bad, but there is so many little water areas in both areas that he was last seen. Mm -hmm. um, and I and think actually by Scarlet's cabaret, I, when we got to looking, we went the other way down Buncombe Road towards yes. Caseyville. And there's so many little ponds out there mm -hmm. that I, I never realized six. were out there. Yeah, I think there's six total. Yeah, um, it's a on, lot. Yes, on Buncombe Road. And I believe across the highway, there is. Mm -hmm. There is. Um, Absolutely. And, and the one thing I wanted to ask you, when he left, because I went... You know, I know there's so many rumors that has went around. And of course, you know, it, it, your family does not deserve to hear a lot of rumors and that. And of course, I have heard nothing but wonderful things about Josh and that's his friends. And speaking, I believe, to your other son when we were out searching and mm -hmm. it, he is just the most kind hearted person there was. Um, and And everybody seemed to love him. And that's. Mm -hmm. Kind of why, you know, I I do my best to help with whatever I can. Um, you know, we we got the billboards up in East yeah. St. Louis, which I kind of hope we can get another set. Yeah. But, um, Denise, can I? I'm so sorry to cut it. Is somebody playing music in the background? I, I keep hearing music. I'm not playing music, but I hear I it too. Know. I don't know. Um. I it, sounded, it seems like it got louder to me over like the last few seconds. That's why. Oh, I'm that's sorry weird. To, I'm so sorry to cut you off. I'm yeah, wondering I don't know. if I'm, am I echoing? No, it's it, it's music. It's music, yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe someone outside. Or, okay, I didn't mean to. Sorry. You, you, no, you, you're, no fine. you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. Um, but what I wanted to, it, it, when he left the club, mm -hmm. 
and walk down. He did stop at the Metrolink first, correct? Yes, that's and the then, first known place that he stopped at. The first okay. place. And, um, what's the other club's name on that road by it? Scarlet. Um, there's Scarlet's and there's the Hustler Club. Okay, so <laughs> the Hustler Club had him on their outside videos showing him walking past towards Washington Park. That's why we know he headed in that direction because he was picked up on their outside. So cameras. he basically headed west mm -hmm. to the Metrolink, which I, if I'm correct, I've drove down there. That road kind of winds a little bit right. there before it gets to there. But with your friends seeing, possibly seeing him on 64, mm -hmm. could he have went off that off ramp and went down to the next? And that's what I think. I don't, I'm not, like I said, we don't know if somebody picked him up and gave him a ride to Jackie Joyner's or we, he walked down 64 and got off to get to Jackie Joyner's. But we know that the last sighting was he leaves Scarlet's. Then you see him on the outdoor cameras of the Hustler. And then I've got everything written down in front of me. Um, so Hustler Club video showed Josh walking north onto Vassar Avenue, Washington Park. Um, then before 530, there's a claim that a friend of a friend saw Josh walking west along I-64 between Kings Highway and North 24th Street, 25th Street, East St. Louis. And then he's seen it on video at Jackie Joyner Kersey Center's bus rail stop. And that's where the bus driver talked to him. Okay. Um, let's see. And then the bus driver tells him, get on his bus. She took him to Emerson Park um bought him and helped him get an all-day pass we know he had twenty dollars in his pocket he pulled that out of his pocket she bought the pass for him um emerson park transit video shows josh waiting on the train but walks eastward off platform then turns left on north 15th street about 6 45 a.m and then the next time, there's a few businesses. There's a church there. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I don't remember all the video cameras we watched. There was quite a few video at different locations uh, that shows him just walking. Again, nobody following him. There's no cars following him, no people on foot following him. And then 728 is when we see him on the video at EJ Mortar Trucking. Um, he turns around he walks back to lincoln avenue by the fire station there okay. um he turns and at the time we thought that was the last video but then like i said uh chelsea saw him on video on north 19th street and that's the last official sighting we've got on him on video okay. yeah and lance said i think he just wanted to clarify one thing it's a little hard for me to follow the directions because i don't know right. the area so i apologize so Lance is the one that had originally asked if he was seen at any stations past 19th Street a little bit ago. Uh, so right. then he, he just follows up with my point is that he walked that direction and was not seen coming back the same direction. So he must have either walked the tracks or beyond the tracks to some point. And we have we have searched the tracks. We have as far as we could go. Um, there. There's a single set of tracks, and then there's um, a track station with quite, a, like, I guess, double tracks or whatever. So he would have had to make it over the first set of tracks and then either go under. There's an underpass, and it was running with water, though, and it was cold. I don't see him going in that cold water as cold as he would have been at the time. Right. Or he would have had to walk over and over a different set of tracks. Um, we've had drones up and down those tracks. We have had dogs up and down those tracks. Uh, there were, there's always empty car, railroad cars on those sets of tracks. And one of my concerns was he got cold, uh, got tired and possibly got onto one of the railroad cars. Um, maybe woke up in a different area if he if it was him that was mugged that morning we were never able to verify uh 
that was kind of my first original thought. Well, if it was him that was mugged at 5.30, 5.15 that morning and he was hurt, could he have had a concussion and got lost and just couldn't find his way back home? If it wasn't him, could the cold have just made him so disoriented that he got onto a railroad car and just didn't wake up? This uh, person who saw the mugging, I'm sorry, I thought you were finished. That, the person that claimed to see the mugging, she was a homeless woman that talked to my okay, younger yeah, son. I was going to say, that, why didn't you call the police right there and have them? Yeah, and I think the police eventually did. Washington Park Police, I believe, eventually talked to her and she denied it. And then I think she gave him a name. But either way, we never got proof that that happened. Um, I just don't know. We don't know. And S. Hicks asked, the friends I am sure have been questioned. She asked if the friends have been questioned. I'm just wondering if he mentioned where he was headed. Uh, well, yeah, you already, uh, as far as the second part of the question, you already you know, told, said what he said to the, the uh, bus stop lady. But, right. Um, she, the, the friends have been questioned, correct? I know you said you spoke to him, but do you know if the police have? No. As far as I know, Washington Park tried to talk to them. Uh, it got set up, and then we thought we had a good lead. A good tip came in. It was not. Uh, so that was <laughs> scheduled, and then they just never followed through with it. Um, the reason why the, I haven't pushed... The police pushed didn't follow through with the friends? The police, we thought we had had a reliable tip. They were scheduled, the friends were scheduled to come in and talk to the police. It was canceled by the police because we oh, had okay. another tip we were actively looking into. We were all at the police station, all getting ready to go out, thought it was a good tip. Anyway, uh, I know a lot of people are still bringing up the friends. I get, I get that. But with Josh not having his phone, and with video proof that nobody was following Josh, there's no reason to suspect a foul play. And it would be easy as his mom to blame them, but I'm not going to do that because we don't have proof. We just don't. Uh, the one friend that he was with that night has been helpful to me. He's very respectful uh, and he'll answer any questions I ask him. He stayed behind to help look that night. He never found them. He even told the police at the club, I'm looking for my friend. How are you guys talking to him? Because we can't find him. And the police officer said, no, Joshua Amos. And that's why his name was ran that night. Um, said no he's not one we're questioning we're not talking to a joshua amos we don't know where he's at and that friend stayed behind a search club went to the local gas station talked to him the other two as far as i know went straight home um unfortunately they didn't stay behind to help look but i don't know why you know um i know there's a lot of questions i have questions too and unfortunately i don't know if we'll ever know the answers to some of our questions but um, things weren't handled exactly like I would have liked them to be handled the first six weeks or more that Washington Park had the case. And, um, they just weren't, I wasn't, most of the family's not happy by the way it was handled. It's, it's not, like I said, it was kind of like we were batting our heads up against the wall to get help. Um. I hear that very often, unfortunately, with family. Yeah, yeah. They didn't have, you know, they kind of had the attitude, well, he's a grown man, right. <laughs> you know. Um, but to me, it's still my child. I wanted more help. Oh, um, will be. And it's hard when they're adults and they're missing because, honestly, they no laws have been broken. So you can't. I think a lot of people, we're so used to watching a TV show and everything settled within an hour, you know, and that's not how, unfortunately, that's not how it works in real life. It takes time. We have gotten some tips that I want the answer right now. And it takes sometimes a couple of weeks and you're waiting on pins and needles for the answer and it never comes or when it does come, it's not good or it was a bogus tip. And it's just a heartbreak. It's such a roller coaster ride that brings so much 
stress and you know you're lucky if you get a seven hour sleep because you just got all these questions rolling in your mind all the time and uh a lot of prank phone calls uh, a lot of hateful messages uh, a lot of tips where they start off by saying i'm 100 percent sure, sure this is him and it's not and it's the heartbreak of wow this person saying they saw him they're 99 percent sure it's him and then they send you a picture and it looks nothing like him and then you go through that heartbreak all over again so i've kind of taught myself how not to get my hopes up too high because i the heartbreak afterwards is too much um it's just too much so um i don't know <laughs> uh denise can you take over just take I'm over sorry. for one second no sorry i just wanted to move my dog's acting up i don't want him to be on the mic just uh, i'm gonna leave you in control for like a minute if that's okay. okay okay um it's putting families in a um it, when you have to relive these moments over and over, I don't think a lot of people understand what the families have to go through and Absolutely. what each one of you have to deal with because they don't realize, or maybe they do, how many people are messaging you wanting to get information, wanting to know this, wanting to know that. You know, Josh was, a, 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 from what I understand and what I've been told, he was absolutely wonderful friend, wonderful brother, wonderful dad, you know, and, you know, each one of us have our faults, but it, it's not, you know, he, the whole purpose is he's missing. Mm. And, you know, even though there's not much there that has led up to the reason, he's still missing and getting mm -hmm. people to just share his story, share his flyers, um, helping whenever, you know, we even right. have a search, it means the world to a family. And that's, that's where, you know, I try to encourage people, you know, give these families a break. Mm -hmm. and they, they deserve, you know, help by sharing, or right. understanding, but each time you have to go through one of these leads that are hearsay, oh, I heard this, or I heard that, mm -hmm. it's leaving you guys in a in an area it's a, it, that you don't deserve. Right, right, yeah. Um, you know, and on the flip side, you know, I've met so many wonderful people <laughs> that have uh, truly been uh, a blessing to us in so many ways. Uh, like you, Denise, um, yeah, you. you reached out to me, I think, what, day two? <laughs> I yeah. think we've been talking since day two. See, um, audience, I tell you all the guys, I tell you guys all the time, Denise is awesome. She's she right is. right on is. the mix. For it. sure. Uh, you know, and there's so many people that have been so helpful and, and our family feels so blessed to have met the people we've met through this, but definitely, you know, if you, if you feel like you've seen him, call Illinois State Police. Yes. Take a picture if you can, if it's safe to do so. I don't want you driving down the highway and you're trying to fiddle with your phone and take a picture. But if you can get a picture and send it to me, but please don't say I'm 99% sure this is him. Right. <laughs> because I've heard that. I'd say at least a hundred times and it's never once been him. Right. Yeah. And he, so when you start off a conversation saying I'm, I'm 99.9% .9 sure this is him. I'm, I'm right off the bat. I don't get my hopes up. And I, I know I had one person that got really upset with me. Uh, she called me on messenger and she said, I think it's him 99% sure it's him. And I didn't get real excited. Right. I guess I didn't sound excited enough for her. And she's like, I can't believe you're acting like this. You're not excited. And I said, I've learned from experience. I can't emotionally put myself through that. I can't do it again. Right. I am going to try and stay hopeful, but not get too excited where I end up heartbroken again, because it's too emotionally hard to get back up. Um, you know, it's hard enough just getting up uh, out of bed in the morning, some mornings where, you know, um, 
this is hard. So, uh, you know, I appreciate the ones that have gotten a picture and then sent it to me. Could this be Josh? Um, I've, I've gotten pictures from people in Texas and California and Chicago and Kansas City, all across the United States. I had one, somebody in a, that works in a hospital sent me one from California and saying, is this son yours? He's in a coma. He's been in a coma for this many months. And unfortunately, you know, it wasn't Josh. Uh, but yeah, it, please, before you <laughs> just don't say you're 99.9% .9 sure it's, it's too hard. When I, when I had come back, you, you guys were talking, I kind of caught the back half of the conversation when you were saying contact police, if you see anything, uh, I also have your, your information, just like your profile on Facebook in the description for people to contact. Do you mm -hmm. want me to not have that and only call the police or how do you want to do it? Um, that's fine. I okay. think most people know about the bring Josh home site and yeah, we've yeah. got over 11,000 viewers and, and we also try and share pictures of other missing people around the area. Uh, because it's it's quite a big following now, and that's the way I know the first couple days are so important, mm -hmm. um, so important, and it seems like the trail gets cold so quickly. Right. And uh, you know, it's hard for me to remember what I did a week ago on a certain Tuesday. So it it you know you're talking almost eleven months out. That's hard to remember back then. You know. Uh, so uh, when we see a missing person in the area in Illinois, Missouri, we try and post it on the page um, so that people can get the word out as soon as possible. So if they want to message me on that page if or they message me on my, I have mine set to private now if I'm not, but you can still send me a message. Right. I uh, honestly changed my phone number, got rid of the phone I had because too many uh, too many messages that at first I had my phone number on, jo on the bring Josh homepage and I was getting calls. I was getting messages at two 30 in the morning. I hope you get a good night's sleep. Well, <laughs> I was actually asleep and he just woke me up. So, um, I do put my phone on silent now at night because if anything happens, I'll see it when I wake up. I can't, uh, not sleep any longer. It's, uh, you know, for a long time, I was only getting maybe three or four hours of sleep and it was hurting me physically where I, I, I wasn't doing well. So yeah, please make sure to take care of yourself. Oh you know, yeah. Obviously it's understandable, but you got to just find a way, especially sleep. So in, you know, important, uh, done right. done in darkness asked, I wonder if he could have, I was wondering something like this too, actually earlier. I wonder if he could have had a hot flash from hypothermia and tried to get in water to quote cool off not realizing he was actually freezing just due to him being kind of you know in the cold so long and i thought about that too because you know how when you're cold if you get in cold water like you, you feel like you warm up kind of right. thing, especially if you're mm -hmm. so uh, yeah that's very possible um like i said we've tried to look as many ponds and, and creeks as possible but uh with the mississippi being right there it's just a really hard I think that's been um, the scary thing our whole family has thought of. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as you hear somebody's missing in that area, that's probably where your mind goes first is the Mississippi. Um, yes. Unfortunately, I don't know if if that's what happened. I don't know if he'll be found. Um, I I pray that's not what happened. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. So we have been called twice about remains found in the Mississippi and uh, like it, your heart stops. It just stops. Um, we do have him in CODIS now. He's now entered in CODIS. He's entered in NamUs. Uh, one of my daughters and I shared pictures of tattoos so that's in NamUs, where if you go to his profile, you'll see every tattoo he has because we get calls about a body found. I know one was in North Virginia somewhere. It was far away in North Carolina. I can't remember. And uh, she said, I'm calling for a tattoo verification. And your heart just stops, you know. Uh, 
it's like that moment's just frozen and it's just heartbreaking. Um, so I'm thankful that they were able to enter in the tattoos because, you know, the police can look up that information and see the tattoos and then we won't get those phone calls. Um, uh, one of his daughters and my DNA has been put into the system. Um, on the, you know, on the chance of any type of remains being found, they can, they can compare it to mine and his daughter's DNA. So we've done that. Uh, they've also got his, um, dental, uh, information in that also. So all that's been taken care of. And I, that, I do have a question from the chat, but Denise, I was going to say, yeah, you, I know you wanted to ask them this one. No, that's okay. So I, I, there was a question in the chat about another kid in the, our young, young, another young man in the area. Those are not connected. There's also another um, one missing out of Collinsville, which are very close. Mm -hmm. These are not related either. No. Um, so I kind of wanted to throw that out there. But Christina asked, she, she answered my question about the DNA and dental records and that, are they on file? And I'm glad to know that they're in CODIS. So that, that, yes. that's good. Yes. Oh, awesome. And, and one thing I just want, this has come up a few times in chat as I knew it would. So I'm going to say uh, my piece on it real quick, Christina, we had talked about this. So if you want to add anything, you can, if not, that's okay too. But uh, Misty Edwards first, she says, you know, I hope you find him soon. I'm so sorry. I can't imagine. And then she asks a question and she's asking because her sister passed away in 2014. Um, similar kind of thing. But she's asked, she asked about, uh, you know, drug usage or anything. So her question is, was he an active user? He absolutely was not an active user. We want to make that public. Right. And uh, you had said, we had talked about this before and you had said, to bring it up I said, yeah you know there there's <laughs> because it's, it's come up like five or six times so i just want to make sure everyone oh knows i'm sure not, i'm sure it has yeah, and he you was know not an active user. if any of that information had any bearing on this case whatsoever i would speak out on it and but you know that's it has no bearing on uh him being gone he you know he honestly was out having fun with friends right. uh you know, he obviously had some drinks or whatever else was going on at the club. I don't know. I wasn't there. I can't say what was done that night. I was not there. Um, and honestly, you know, it has no bearing on how he went missing. Uh, for people to think, oh, it's because of drugs or whatever, and he just decided to run away from home. That's not what happened. Uh we know he didn't leave on purpose because he wouldn't have asked the bus driver, I, I need to get home. I need to go home. Right. That's all he wanted to do was come home. Um, and so, you know, as far as drugs has no bearing on this case, uh, I think a lot of, you know, I know a lot of people are curious and they, they want the whole story. I don't have the whole story. Right. right. And I'm not going to speak out on something that I don't have any proof of. And I wasn't there, you know, um, like I said, the people he was with that night, I didn't know them at all. So there's nobody I can even ask, hey, what happened that night? And I really feel in my heart of hearts is whatever happened that night at the club has no bearing on what happened later that he got lost. Mm -hmm. Um and now if he was still in a car with the friends and they disappeared or there was something that happened and he disappeared later, then I would dig deeper into that line of questioning. But unless I was there and had a hundred percent proof, I'm not going to speak out on anything regarding and, that. And kind of adding to that just in a different way, because Carla had said something about if someone possibly put something in his drink, I don't know if they looked at footage from the club or something like that, if that could have been why or. Well, I know they did look at footage in the club. The only footage I saw with Josh in it was him in the parking lot. Okay. That's the only footage I saw of Josh at the club was in the parking lot. Okay. Uh, to everyone in the chat asking about psychics, I don't take a personal stance on that. Um, if Christina wanted to 
respond. Can I please? Yeah, but, sure, sure, yeah. Um, I hear probably two, three times a week right. from people about psychics. Uh, and I, you know, and I know some of them are trying to be helpful and I, and I appreciate it. I really do. But every one that has called me or that I've talked to or that has messaged me has a different story. Right. That's the problem. So that's, that's really hard for me to want to see another psychic because how many times can you go to a psychic and hear different things? So I don't put a lot of, I'm not saying there's not psychics out there. I'm not saying that at all. Um, but it's very hurtful when someone claiming to be a psychic right. messages you and says, Oh, Josh needs me to tell you this. Right. 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 Or right. we saw him and he's, he was shot or I've heard from psychics. One said it was gruesome. It was not a fun call at all. Um, that he had been shot, uh, where his body is. Well, of course his body wasn't there. Um, another one that he drowned, uh, another one that he passed away in an old barn because of hypothermia. Another one said he was on the railroad tracks, he tripped and fell, and he's going to be in the brush. It's very disturbing and it's so hard to hear. And, um, and like I said, you know, I'm not saying that psychics aren't real, I'm, I'm not, uh, but. Yeah, unfortunately, there are people out there that's going to call these things in. And and I don't think they understand the torment they put the family through. Right, Because you've got someone t telling you that they know. So you give it a, a little weight, you know. Yeah. And it's very hard. Every one of them has a different story. So here's the thing. If, let's, if, you, if you talk to 100 of them, at least 99% of them are wrong. You right. Know, how do you know who's the right one? And that's, that's the, the problem, point. you know. Um, you know, if it's if it's somebody I know well and they recommend this, me to somebody that's went to one and they've heard, uh, you know, they've been right or whatever, then I would try and keep an open mind about it. Um, but I haven't. <laughs> so, um, you know, I get asked about psychics all the time and that's not something that's viable for me any longer. I think I'm. I've. <clears throat> I just don't think it's for me just because I've heard from so many so-called psychics that it's just hurtful. It's painful and it hasn't provided any information that's helped. So I know he didn't have his phone on him, Christina, right. but mm -hmm. have you guys went and looked to see if anybody has tried to log into any of his accounts, whether it be banks or uh, Facebook or any social media, have you tried to see that at all? Well, uh, unfortunately, the phone is locked. Uh, we've decided, uh, me and one of the other kids have the phone in our possession, and we are not going to have it looked into. And, and the only reason for that is we believe strongly that Joshua has a right to his privacy. Right. If he had the phone on him that'd be a different story i'd want to see phone records or whatever but he did not have his phone and to me josh deserves his privacy that's you know and i'm not going to break that um we we contacted the banks we knew about and like i said he was a grown man he was 32 i don't know I don't know where all he banked. I know of one bank and we did contact them. Sorry, my, I got to fix my chair. Um, and they originally told us over the phone that they didn't see any transactions. Well, after that, we weren't really given any information because of privacy laws. And we recently went to the grand jury uh, and got um subpoenas for bank records we don't want to know any personal what he bought i don't need to know anything you know about it just as is, is there a transaction has money has money um come out of the account since the 19th of march um that's going to tell us a lot mm -hmm. i think unfortunately if 
if there's been no transactions, that's not good news. Um, if there is transactions, that might give us a date, a time, a video. Uh, was it Josh that made transaction or was it somebody else? Was he robbed? We don't know. So it's going to answer a lot of questions for us. And I'm very thankful we were, the grand jury sided with us on the subpoena for that. It took a while. Um, we're still waiting on news. I don't know how long that wait's going to be. Uh, but uh, I think we'll know a lot more once we get the news of of that, of the subpoenas. Um, Denise, I'll, I'll start by asking you, and then of course we'll finish with Christina, since we're kind of nearing the end, um, is there anything that you wanted to make sure that is said or asked or anything like that? If not, we can go right to Christina. No, I think she's answered a lot of questions that, good, um, yeah. you know, I wanted to make sure people understood Josh's case and what you're going through, what your family's going through. Um, I just want to express to you, you know, my heart is with you guys all the time. Um, whatever I can do, what, if, if it's a search, anything, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm there for you. Um, I understand and um, we'll do what I can to help and keep this word, you know, out there because that's important. I mean, this is my hometown that he's yeah. from. So I live here. I see this and anytime I can help, um, you know, anybody, even if it's not our home, my hometown, I, I go out and help and do searches. But, you know, they, this is a young man from the town I live in. So um, I, 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 I want him found. I appreciate it. Thank and you. I can, I can tell you if anybody means that it's Denise. Oh, I, don't right. want, I don't want to go off on a tangent here real quick, but um <laughs> There are so many people online that um, try to be helpful. Uh -huh. uh, and, and there's the people, everyone calls themselves advocates, which they are, but there are so many people that they'll go and they'll make like a two minute little flyer in Microsoft Word. And then when the case is solved, they'll say like, we helped solve the case. And and it's uh -huh. like, you can't take credit for that because you right. need a little flyer. There's 50 of them anyway. You know, it's just, I feel like, there are a lot of people that when I watch their action, it feels like they're doing it not to help, but more for the appearance of their help kind of thing. Whereas Denise is like the most genuine person. Oh, definitely. She's definitely. always out there helping. So I just like I said, I met her on the first search, uh, you know, public search where people yeah. actually came up to help. And I've been talking to her on Messenger, I think, since that first week. And uh, well, I think your family thought I was a little bit crazy going into some of those buildings. <laughs> I did not hesitate to walk in the buildings or go into the woods. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I remember telling you one time, please don't go by yourself. <laughs> I think you were headed home from work and you were going to stop. And I'm like, oh gosh, I mean, yeah. nervous breakdown. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, I, did, I get real nervous when somebody's out there by themselves for sure. But yeah, uh, you are very appreciated um was there anything you wanted to uh get out or make sure that is said or answered that we have a lot to say Christine? i do about uh josh's site i know uh there's not much new to inform the public of it you know because we literally have no tips no leads right now um but please don't stop sharing his picture and i know shares have gone down and I know it's probably because there's nothing new going on. And I get that. And, but it takes a second to push that share button. There's so many new cases out there now that we try and share. And I noticed today one only had like 35 shares. I need you all to share. Um, and there was a man missing in St. Charles the other day. Luckily, I think he was found. And I try to keep up to date on that too. Um, but share, it takes a second, yeah. you know, it really, it's so, we appreciate you all. I know at the beginning, everybody was sharing, we get like a thousand shares, you know, and we, we so appreciate his face staying out there in the public. And I know I heard a comment, well, doesn't this take away from Josh's case? No, Josh would have been one of the first ones to share, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
it's just something that I'm passionate about. You feel so helpless when it's your child missing. And, and I feel like if we can help another mother, another dad, another brother, um, Josh would want that. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Share, share, share guys. That's honestly, if anything you could do to help, that's probably the number one thing, especially if you're not in the local area. Um, Absolutely. Ursa Bruin says I am near there and we'll do group searches. All right. Uh, well, yeah, contact Christina or Sabrina if you'd like to help. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure they, they appreciate anybody helping out with the search or anything like that. Uh, Brittany Collins says his sister here. Thank you all for your support and continued attention to his case. We have Karen Ahart saying the family appreciates every single person who has helped in multiples of ways. We pray you continue to keep Joshua's face circulating. Please call 911 if you see him. And Amanda Minnick says, I'm always looking for him. So just to get a few. Mm -hmm. people out there thank you to everyone um okay well i, I think we're going to finish up there guys we're at about an hour and 15 minutes so well, thank um, you jason we really appreciate this no no problem absolutely um anything i can do forward if there's an update and you want to do another interview or if you just have something i need to share whatever it is just let me know absolutely um, i'm always i'm always kind of finding new cases and i have to talk to new families that are coming on the show, families that say no, uh, people who watch the show. So I get like hundreds and hundreds of messages a day. So I'm not great at, at actively contacting people. But mm -hmm. if, you, if an update comes and you contact me, I'll respond to you. So just let me know if there's anything else you need. But we'll do. Let me know. All right. We'll do. It's very appreciated. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for coming on tonight. Um, thank thank you. you, Denise. And just want to say, Christina, thank you for everything. You're not alone. Uh, we're, or the whole community is here to help you. And please let her know that chat by by joining the group, sharing the uh, photos. Number one thing, share, share, share. And uh, we will end it there, girls. All thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll let you guys go. <laughs> good night. All right. Have a good night. Thank you, Denise. No problem. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. As always, I'm sure I'll talk to you very soon. I know. Thank you. You have All a good right. night. You too. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, that went really well. I think Christina did a great job of grouping all the information together. This was a case. There wasn't a ton of information available on this case. Um, there were, I think, like four or five videos out there. So this is one that I wanted to get done as soon as possible. If you follow my channel, you know that I had some tech issues. We were supposed to do this a couple of days ago. That's all on my end, not Christina. So blame me for that. I do apologize. I'm awful when it comes to tech issues. It started with something very simple and kind of snowballed. So somebody helped me with it eventually. And uh, so thank you to everyone who joined. Please share, 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 guys. That literally is the best thing you can do. Uh, some other good things you can do is comment under the video. I'm not talking about in the chat. We've had you know thousands of comments in the chat tonight. But once the video gets uploaded, if you leave a comment under the video, so not in the chat, but the actual comment section, um, it tells YouTube, it's interaction with the video. It tells YouTube people enjoy it. They like watching it. It helps you to promote it more. That's one thing that this channel uh, has awful, awful <laughs> numbers in is comments under the videos. It makes sense because you guys talk so much in the chat. So it's understandable that once, once the chat's over, you kind of, what more do you have to say kind of thing? I get it. But if you could find you know, something to say under the video, every time you leave a comment, you're helping the video, just so you know that. But um, that's one thing I've tried multiple different ways to get people to do, and it doesn't really help. The, you know, a lot of videos have a few comments or something like that. Again, understandable because of the chat, but, um, you know, please try to consider that. Uh, anybody with super chats or anything like that, any kind of donations or anything like that, uh, we do a monthly book raffle. So um, every time you um, support the channel, you go into the monthly raffle at the end of the month. You get, if you win, you get a true crime book or DVD of your choice. Just something fun we try to do to keep the channel self-sufficient so that we can do this full time. So thank you to anybody who supports us in that way. And other than that, I think we are done. Uh, thank you so much. We had very good turnout tonight. I was <laughs> I was gone for a couple of years. It's only like my fourth video back, I think. And uh, the numbers have been starting to rise getting close to where they were as far as there being like a couple hundred people at a time 
in the chat, you know, between 100 to 200, which ends up being like a thousand people that watch it over the course of the hour and a half. So uh, the numbers are going back up. So I'm very, very happy with that. Very important because what are we doing this for if we're not getting the message out to as many people as possible, right? But uh, uh, we will end it there. Thank you so much for joining us. We keep Josh and Christina in our prayers. Uh, thank you again to Denise McGarity, who's an absolutely amazing advocate. And um, that's basically it. Thank you so much for, excuse me, guys. Thank you so much for watching Jason Hebert Live. Uh, we'll have another show coming within a, two or three days, uh, probably part two of the last video. So um, if you guys watched our last video about the two teenagers, I think we're going to be doing that part two of that very, very soon with the mother of uh, Hunter. But, okay, have a great night, guys, and thank you so much for joining us. This has been Jason Hebert Live. I love you all.